Dr. Doll, and welcome to another video. <clears throat> we are changing it up again. We're in my kitchen. You can see my chaos of doll parts over here. There's a Chrissa head right there, <laughs> a TLC Welly Wisher in the bucket there. I'm sorry that I didn't get a video out last week. Um, for a number of reasons, it just never happened. Number one, I had bronchitis. Um, <clears throat> I was, I actually thought I was okay. Like I thought I was just dealing with allergies. Um, and then my husband was like, you should really go, you should go to the doctor. You don't sound good. <laughs> so I went to the doctor and she was like, you have 101 temperature. Did you know that? And I was like, no. And she's like, and then she listened to my lungs and she's like, you have an infection in your lungs. Did you know that? And I was like, no. <laughs> And she's like, you need to go home and lay down. And I was like, well, okay. <laughs> I think as moms, we just get used to just going, you know, just getting done what needs to be done. And, and you know, our health comes second. It shouldn't, but our health just kind of tends to come second after everyone else's. <coughs> can still hear a little bit of it and I don't have my full voice back yet I got laryngitis again I got some antibiotics some she put me on some steroids and I was down for about five days um so I'm feeling better but that was the number one reason why a video didn't happen last week the other reason was um I just didn't really like how the end product came out so I had taken these I basically was working on Barbies again and I think I've decided that I just need more practice with dolls that size um, I am just I'm not there yet so I need more practice with like drawing faces and just working on a scale that that's that small um, I really want to get better at it but man it just it's like I have a vision in my head but I lack the skills necessary to actually do it so um, one of these days I'll get better and I'll make some more videos about Barbies and um, maybe some ball jointed dolls. But I think today we're just going to stick with 18 inch dolls. So I have this girly who I purchased very cheap, I think $20 off of Mercari. And you can see that she is in some rough shape. So she is a medium skin tone classic mold with textured hair and I want to say that she's a 42, a truly me 42, which is the same as um, Lady Antonia, the the doll that we saved uh, that was thrown in the trash. Um, and she obviously has busted a seam over here. I'm not really sure what happened or what would cause that, I guess just a loose thread and it just started to rip and got out of control. The funny thing is though, like her wig is obviously in really, she smells kind of good. Her wig is obviously in rough shape. Like there's a lot of bald patches. You can see that someone's obviously cut short pieces. Um, there's a lot of baldness up at her part but and then obviously the giant tear in her canvas but the funny thing is is that other than that she's really not in that bad of shape um like her legs aren't she definitely needs to have her limbs tightened but they're not you know look at that they're not that bad um and she's dirty and she does have like scratches on her face and shine marks. Um, I don't know if you can see them at all. Probably not. Well, there's, you can see that one on her cheek, but there's no Sharpie. There's no ink. There's no dye transfer stains, which are the bane of my existence. And I think a lot of other, uh, people who do customs. So I, I really don't think she's going to be that bad to rescue. Um, I'm thinking I might have to put a patch 
of extra fabric here on her side, just depending on um, if she's missing any. And she might have to be a little bit thinner, <laughs> but to, to do some liposuction, just suck some of that stuffing out. Um, if only it was that easy, right? Just take, just, just take some of that extra stuffing out. But we might have to cinch her waist up a little bit, um, take some stuffing out and just give her like a very minimal uh, bit of a tummy tuck. So she'll probably be like one or two centimeters smaller uh, around her waist than the typical American Girl doll. And that's not really going to affect how clothing fits her. Um, I don't think it'll be too big of a deal, but because it does look like she's missing a tiny bit of fabric. So by the time I stitch it up and allow for, you know, some extra fabric seam allowance, um, she's going to lose, you know, a good centimeter there, which I don't think is going to be a big deal. Um, but let me show you kind of what I'm thinking. I got this super fun wig from Zazu Dolls. You need your jacket off? No, I close clothes on. Your clothes are on, buddy. Do you want your clothes off? No. Okay. I got this super fun wig from Zazu. And I forget which style this is. But um, both Zazu and B Beauty Designs. Uh, recently launched a bunch of their textured and curly wigs in some fun bright colors. So B Beauty Designs, uh, I think their Alexis wig and their Naomi wig. Their Naomi wig now is available in the color grape, which is it's reminiscent of the number um, 91 that has the like bright uh, the bright purple ringlets, the really curly hair. It's similar to that. Love and then this was um, Zazu came out with this gorgeous sort of raspberry pink, um, really super tight curl look, and I'm just I'm obsessed with it. So I thought we might try this on her, and then I'm a little bit torn on which eyes to use. Um, I have a couple of options, so I have two acrylic eye, well three acrylic eye. I have the. Heather Purple, which I've used many, many times before, and I love it. It's very versatile. Um, it goes really well with pink, magentas, violets. Um, when people, when I have customers tell me they want pink eyes on a doll, this is usually the one that I recommend because it has pink tones in it, um, but it doesn't make them look like they have red eyes. Um, I also have this violet, which is more of a like a standard iris pattern, the standard sort of starburst um, iris pattern, and it's a little bit darker. Come on, camera. Focus, focus, focus. Focus. I don't know if you can see it, but it's a little bit darker, and it also goes... Um, I'm not a huge fan of this particular size eye and um, iris pattern with the classic mold. It tends to overwhelm the eyes a little bit, at least just in my personal opinion. I also have um, gray, if we wanted to go with something a little more natural. And then I also have something kind of fun. I managed to find these, oh, this isn't it. So Beautifully Custom is no longer, which is so sad. But I did find, I did purchase these secondhand, these glass Beautifully Custom eyes. Um, I think it's the color Unicorn, Unicorn Rainbow. And it's this really deep sapphire blue but it also has um a pink ring on the inside i don't know if you can see can you see isn't that gorgeous so i've been saving these for like a special occasion um 
I don't know if this is the doll I'm going to use it on, but it's an option. So I think I'm going to go, what are you, what are you fussing about? I think I'm going to start with the Heather purple just because that was my first instinct. But if I don't like it, I can always change my mind later. Are you being sassy? Are you being sassy? No. Stay tuned. probably wondering why there is a giant gaping hole in her head um, let me explain <laughs> So, I just wasn't happy with the purple eyes I don't know like they were cute but they just weren't the look I was going for um, and so I just I really wanted something a little bit more lifelike um, so I decided to do something a little bit crazy and go with some fixed eyes um, in order to get better access to her eye sockets. I used a um, exacto knife. I cut a triangular shape out of the top of her head 
And then here you can see it's a little bit scary looking, but I'm actually cutting those little eye sockets out and so that I can just um, fasten the eye directly to where the hole is. So I'm pulling those little pockets out right now. Um, I don't know, I've just been really into stationary eyes lately. I just, I love the way they look. Um, they're so lifelike and detailed. Um, I don't know, it's just kind of a new obsession. So anyways, I just had to try this. Um, I got these particular eyes from a Journey Girl and I love them because they're oblong shaped and they come with built-in lashes that curl upward. So I just, I really like the way they look. Look at that it's just it's so stinking cute I don't know like maybe it's just me but like ugh, fixed eyes are just they just really speak to me I don't know I just I love them I love that you can position them and ugh, they're just they're so good um, so I'm adding I kind of want her to have like a kawaii sort of like very vibrant like pink makeup look like lots and lots of like blushing and pink so um, I'm just putting like a bunch of uh, like hot pink eyeshadow on her um, just layering it up on her upper lid and then also on her lower lash line um, because she just I don't know like with hair like that you definitely are a vibrant and fun person and so I just really wanted to convey that with her makeup as well Okay, so to fasten the fixed eyes to the eye socket, um, I'm actually using some epoxy sculpt. Now, this isn't what traditionally you use um, for fixed eyes. There is an actual like putty that you can purchase. Um, however, this is what I have on hand, and I'm not really planning on ever swapping these eyes out for different eyes, so I'm okay with it, you know, hardening. Um, so the epoxy sculpt I have is there's two parts you mix together and then um, I just rolled it into like a snake basically and then wrapped it around the eye and just sort of smushed it in there nice and nice and good um, and then in 24 hours it should dry um, completely hard so it should be pretty well fastened in there. Um, I was afraid to use glue because I didn't want any glue to like run on the eyeball or you know ruin the finish so I just felt like this was a better option. see that my pastels are kind of a mess right there I'm not sure what happened <laughs> but um, basically just giving her some blushing all around her face and on her nose um, and then once that's done I glue her top back on um, there's a lot of different ways you can do this I used a invisible or clear gorilla glue because it sort of expands as it dries um, and like I said I'm not really planning on getting back in there and changing her eyes out um, anytime soon at least so I was fine with it being a more permanent uh, glue solution 
So now I'm gonna draw my attention to fixing up that busted side, that busted seam. So just using some um, heavy thread and I used a pretty big needle for this. Here it is. And um, oh, I'm just gonna to sew her up oh, no. nice and tight. Um, I used a satin stitch and then I think I did a reinforcement stitch as well just to make it extra strong. Now stitch the dolly up. So I'm going to take a little bit of her stuffing out. So that she's easier to stitch up. Well, I'm trying to make her a little bit easier to to stitch up. Did you have a Kia? A Kia? Why would I have a Kia? It's a key cat. Oh, a key cat? Yeah, it's a key cat. That's the red right there. I somehow managed to get her stitched up um, <laughs> despite all of the chaos um, and now it's time to put her head back on her body. Once I got the wig on um, and I was covering up the old glue lines, it definitely was a little bit long in the front. Um, <laughs> so I trimmed it just a little bit. Um, I know Brad Mondo is screaming somewhere um, because I'm using kitchen shears to cut hair. <laughs> but um, it's what I had on hand, so that's what I used and just gave her a little bit of a, a cute curly bang moment. Um, just trying to make them as even as possible so that she can see and we can see her a little bit better. So once the, her hair is done, I go to the lips and I'm just lining them out with this um, sort of dark 
mauve um, and with the classic mold um, y'all know that the classic mold is not my favorite to work on um, I always overdraw the lip line a little bit on the classic mold because otherwise they just look really thin um, kind of like fish lips <laughs> so I overdraw them a little bit just to give them something a little bit of body um, I tried to give like an ombre effect to her lips and it kind of worked, but um, it, it wasn't like fantastic. I've noticed that with dolls, if you are doing an ombre look, you have to be even more extreme um, with like the different shade variants. Like there's, you can't be subtle. Um, you just have to go from like very dark to very light in order for it to stand out. Um, so I kind of did an ombre, but it's not super obvious. is on I give her a little white highlight highlight just um, on her upper lip I've seen some custom um, doll makers do this like Hextian and I love the effect so I figured I'd give it a go and then um, once it's all nice and dry I give it a glossy coat of Liquitex um, latex gloss varnish I had these little jewels for like doing nail designs so I thought it'd be fun to give her a little stud on her nose um, just this little pink stud um, I just think it matches her fun personality she is all done I gave her a French tip manicure with pink and white I gave her a little um, bling bling ring um, she had a little mark on her finger so I gave her a ring to kind of cover that up and give her some cute jewelry um, she of course has her little nose ring because she's a fun girl she was just a lot of fun she was a lot of fun to make um, I have this flower power uh, two-piece set that I just thought really matched her energy um, and I thought it went really well with her hair so um, I put her in that and I have some pink sneakers over to this side as well but um, since her pedicure is drying um, I didn't put them on quite yet. Um, not sure of a name I'm kind of thinking like Nikki, Nicole, I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you enjoyed, and thanks so much for watching. Bye, guys.